Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. Beyond the visible, there are dimensions of God waiting to be explored. In interacting with the dimensions of God, Apostle Oromo Sai guides us through these divine realms. Discover how to connect with God's presence in profound and life-changing ways. Experience the depth of God's love and power through worship and prayer. Unlock the mysteries of God's dimensions and transform your spiritual journey, leading you into deeper interactions with the divine. I, for many years, I've not preached it once. Everywhere I go, I try to preach it. We say, no, it's not here. Years. I didn't even know I would preach it here because you know what <laughs> i'd already escaped i'd already escaped from it what i wanted to preach tonight was the realm of light they say start from i couldn't leave this i wanted to leave this script i couldn't so we'll talk about the realm of intimacy for the next 30 minutes because if you are going to The realm of God is revealed. You don't know it. You don't know that, that realm. I know I've been preaching for years, but there's a difference between preaching and knowing the realm. You can know the Bible and not know Jesus. You can know the Bible and not know the Holy Ghost. Is that true? You are an expert in the Bible? At least if you did basic theology, if you did basic theology, you should know the in and out of scripture, at least the general philosophy of the Bible. But you see, there's a difference between the message and the passage. The message is what was revealed by the Holy Spirit. The passage are the tools by which you give muscle to the message. So if all you know is the passage, and you don't know the message it means you don't know the law you'll be preaching some things from passages but they were not inspired by god there was no emphasis that was driven into your spirit if you do that for five years you will discover that what you have your effort is not building anybody it's not the spirit of god that is at work it is you the intelligent you using your brain to bring passages together the spirit of god is the one building when he gives you a message and then you now use passages to build to communicate that message the message is a very simple one but you use passages to show the principles and the progression to arrive at that emphasis that's what a good preacher does and when you see the congregation in the next two years one year you will see the beauty of how god develops people because you are not the one that is in charge of what you say but you receive messages and you couple it with passages i've been privileged to see transformations from the most unlikely people that sit under the ministry of the word of god because i'm not the author of the message i received the message from the it is revealed and when that aspect comes i know the passages as a theologian to use to communicate what the message do you get that yes, even in choosing the passages he will tell you the ones to use yes, that this one if you start to this one will lead the people astray <laughs> so it is not your effort it is his effort so because of this scripture I'm, i am compelled to take us to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3. Mind you, if I notice you are not following, we will just stop because Ephesians chapter 2. 
verse chapter 3 verse 2 Ephesians chapter 3 verse 2 So we'll read from verse 2 to verse 9. He said, If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to you world, that means there was a type of grace. There was a unique type of grace that was committed to Apostle Paul because of the Ephesian believers. All right? You see, so and this, the word dispensation there is oikonomia in the Greek which means to distribute now maybe um you bring just like we had those gifts that were given to mothers that just delivered children and that was distribution but before you distributed they had to purchase them hmm? and to purchase them okay so in the book of ephesians ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 talks about what do you call it here? Is it Central Bank of Uganda or Reserve Bank of Uganda? This scripture here is Central Bank of Heaven. This this scripture. The scripture that says that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly realms. In Christ Jesus. This is Heaven's bank account. This is the Central Bank. This it is from this resource base that God funds every destiny that is in Christ Jesus. Now, the central bank or the reserve bank of heaven is situated in Christ. Let me explain that. First of all, the bank is in heaven. You would have wanted a bank in Uganda that dispenses shillings, Ugandan shillings. That's what you want. Um, but they now put the bank in heaven. And you need a bank account that is in your name so that you can go and withdraw. And then they put the account in the name of Jesus. So the question is, why is the bank, why is the account in heaven? Why is it not in Kenya? <laughs> and why is it in somebody else's name? Why not in your own? So there was a time where the account was on earth. And the account was in the name of Adam. So Adam interacted on our behalf and transacted with Satan and handed over the entire <laughs> all the resources were hand so much so that when Satan was tempting Jesus, he told him that see the glory of the world, it was handed over to me. Satan said that. So because of that. God decided that he will now put the bank account in heaven and put it under Jesus' name so that that kind of stuff <laughs> will not happen again. Now, so if you are going to be eligible to withdraw, first of all, you must understand Jesus must assign to you a purpose from him, not the one you went and learned in, in motivational books. You just came and said, say, dream. Dream big. Uh -uh. They said, what do you know? Go where you are celebrated. Who told you that? <laughs> Jesus said, when you were still an infant, you went where you went. You wanted to go. But now that you are old, um, another man holds you by the hand and takes you to places you don't want to go. Uh, God will drag you to places you don't intend to go. Yes. How many of you think I like being an object of controversy. Nobody will like At least I, for my wife's sake, I don't like that. So that she can sleep, I don't like that. But they say, please, he took my hand. I didn't want to, he took me there. He say, you are going to operate custom, custom duty. Custom, yes. The head of custom. So that when contraband wants to be smuggled into the country, you will be there to inspect and to discard it. I didn't assign myself that role. Oh my, you are not with me. <laughs> so I'm a I'm the customer officer. <laughs> See false doctrine of some people came up that there's miracle money that God is releasing money into people's account. I'm I'm a customer officer. When contraband wants to come into the body of Christ, it rings alarm. So I come with scriptures to contend with it. 
I didn't choose that role. I didn't choose it. But now that I know that I'm chosen for it, I prepared myself for it like, like a soldier. In scriptures, in spirit. Yes. And I don't retreat. It is either it are you I don't I'm not afraid of the faces of men because God used that in 300 level in the university. He said, Be not afraid. He, he, ah, he has given me orientation. I didn't want to go there. But he helped me back then. Those of you that still listen to people that say go where you are celebrated, you are in the outer court. You, you are long lost. Jesus was not a motivational preacher. He preached the kingdom, and the kingdom is without compromise. This is the will of God and nothing more. Now, so this is the this is the resource base. And what qualifies you to become a to, to have a budget that this, this account can fund? Are you there? Is that Jesus gives you an assignment? So, based on the calling that Apostle Paul had, that we are reading about in the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 2, he had a calling. Is that calling that warranted what he called the dispensation of the oikonomia of the grace of God? His calling became a conduit through which that funding can be dispensed. That's what Paul was saying. So if, if I don't have an assignment from Jesus Christ, I will not attract that funding. And meanwhile, the funding that is spoken about is not in, measured in Ugandan shillings. Not measured in the Nigerian Naira, the British pound. It is measured. The name of the currency is grace. Yeah, for your information. Are you there? So, when God gives you an assignment, what he now does is that he gives you a dispensation of his grace. He gives you an oikonomia of his grace, which means that he will give you a massive body of grace so that through your ministry, grace will be distributed. Do you get that? All right, so, go back. He said, if you have heard of the dispensation, the oikonomia, the distribution, that my calling requires that is the reason for which i was giving grace and the grace i was giving was because of you did you get that yes. next 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 this he said how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery what we are talking about here is the knowledge of the mystery the knowledge of what the mystery because of the calling he was given grace and that grace gives him access to the knowledge of something that god kept secret for many ages you know i told you that god in in in, in attempting to set us up in a place of advantage he concealed some things even before creation began and the things that god concealed when keeping with an effort a divine effort to put us in the advantage you get that now this guy is now saying that he had a revelation that gave him access to the knowledge of such mysteries that were kept hidden i say he has wrote about the disclosure of this mystery in some other places are you following? Yes. Now, my question is, because you soon find the answer to my question, how did he have access to the knowledge of this mystery? That's my question. Huh? Yeah, he, revelation. Now, uh, this revelation, there is something that precedes revelation. That's what I'm saying. Let's read on. He said, whereby when you read that you may understand and know my knowledge, in the mystery of Christ you see if you
gospel of God. That is why I was made a priest. To, to show the world that the, 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 the lines of partition have been removed. And we are now of the same stock. To take in radical provisions. Sure. Because even the devil did not know that in one generation, the dichotomy between the Jew and the Gentile would take them. Even Satan did not know that it would happen in one generation. But that was what Apostle Paul's ministry did. And I want you to see what gave me the authority to dive into this treacherous array in doctrine. He said, Wherefore I was made a minister according to the gifts of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. So the Holy Spirit was at work in him over time. The Holy Ghost was on overdrive to give him the ability to minister those things in those days. Are we there? Yes. Verse 8. Unto me, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace given, preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Verse 9, he tells us what he enjoyed that gave him access to the revelation of that mystery. And to make all men see what is the fellowship. Now, so the fellowship of the mystery goes back to the revelation of that mystery that led to the knowledge of the mystery. So what I came to describe to us today is the fellowship of the mystery. Now, first of all, the mystery spoken about here is the quadrant, the community of the members of the Godhead. Because the, are you there? The warehouse of the secrets that were kept under lock and key before creation began, the warehouse is trapped within these three members of the Godhead. So these three members of the Godhead, they operate a unique type of fellowship with one another. I hope you know it was in the bosom of the members of the Godhead that the conception of man was made. Let us make man. It was in their bosom. It was in their bosom because the three members of the Godhead will have a part to play in the making of man. That's what it was in their bosom that that purpose was conceived. In the ministry of Jesus, you are going to find some statements he made about the design for man. It is only a member of that council that has the ability to make such revelations. Because it was there when the idea of humankind was conceived. For instance, you will hear Jesus say, in the book of Luke chapter 18 verse 1 and he speak a parable to them unto this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint he said, according to design the design for man is that he's a creature of prayer and there is nothing like prayerless in the Bible nothing nothing the opposite of prayerful is not prayerless the opposite of prayerful is fainting <laughs> You see, if you are not operating according to design, if you are not praying always, it means you have found a way of existing, another way of existing. And that way is called fainting. You are on life support. You, which is, if witches get interested in your case, <laughs> you will be sacrificed. You know, anybody that gets interested in your case, you become a victim on the left and on the right because you are malfunctioning. That's how, not how you were designed. Je there were many scriptures where Jesus revealed how man was supposed to operate. The reason why he knows that was because he was there in the council of the Godhead. That's where the fellowship of the mystery takes place. What Paul was telling us was that God, the council of God, that Godhead that you know, gave him the opportunity to come into their midst and find out the things they have kept secret. We are talking about intimacy. Stay with me. Stay with me. Oh, you are not with me. He said they, they opened up their exclusive group and gave him access to think their thoughts. 
that was where he discovered that it was in the plan of god for gentiles and jews to become one one body he said before this time it was kept secret but he called me to make all men see what is a fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid where in god i want to show you what intimacy means intimacy with god is the invitation that god has given us to the fellowship of the mystery there are still things that are hidden in god that he wants to make manifest in fact your ministry is supposed to be one of the disclosures of the things hidden in god the wisdom your, the, your ministry is a wisdom that was kept to challenge darkness in this day in this day where there is so much corruption in the body of christ the people we should be looking up to have gone strange ways and god knows that his witness is going to suffer loss he has anticipated a time like this even before we were born and he created a mystery a strategy that is hidden in himself only those that have the ability to access such things that are hidden in god through the fellowship of the mystery Can uncover such strategies that God has ordained for this season. Did you get it? So the question now is how do we access the fellowship of the mystery? Are you with me? This is what God did so that we can access the fellowship of the mystery. First Corinthians 6 verse 7. Are you there? First, six, first Corinthians 6 verse 17. Sorry, not seven, 17. Give me 17. In order for us to be able to access the fellowship of the mystery, God did something in the New Testament layout. He he created what we call the mingled spirit. So when you gave your life to Christ, the Spirit of God came to live in your spirit that's the that's it that's what theology tells us it's deeper than that the spirit of god mingled himself with your spirit that's the true position of things now the bible says he that is joined to the lord is one spirit with not two it's just like you take coca-cola and you take fanta are you there then you mix them together what is the result of the mixture is it coke no. is it fanta no. there's a new arrangement we don't know the name of that new arrangement but it has qualities of coke it has qualities of fanta if you taste it you taste some coke in it you taste some fanta in it, but it's not coke and it's not fanta that's what happened to you when you gave your life to christ the mingled spirit was the result of your faith Now, let me give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Because this is the basis of our intimacy with God. One member of that Godhead decided to be mingled with your spirit. Now, in Nigeria, the mechanics can work wonders. You can bring a Peugeot car to the park. And then they say your engine is dead. 
they have a technology by which they can fit in a Mercedes Benz engine in a in Dio Pujo. They can fix Mazda in Toyota. Yes, my my Toyota what? My Mitsubishi went bad. It was Toyota. They say they say the, the, the Mitsubishi is is a feminine engine. Let's give you something max, muscular. They went and bought Toyota and they put it in Mitsubishi. So and I was not telling them, okay, what gearbox will you use? They said, oh, don't worry. <laughs> when they finished that job, the performance of my vehicle was Toyota performance, but it was a Mitsubishi body. <laughs> Yeah, the reason why I took you to the wonders of the mechanics in Nigeria is because that's what God does. What God did was that he smuggled the Holy Spirit and mingled him with your spirit. So that in terms of performance, you will perform in the energy, the strength. Are you there? Performance will not be like a human spirit. Performance will be like that means the spirit of god with your spirit can search into all things the ability you will have inside of you will not be the human spirit ability but the divine spirit ability so i can search into the depths of god if i can keep speaking in tongues and i'm i maintain my mind that i want to know what is on your mind i want to know it i want to find out what you are saying today you will take me into the fellowship of the mystery and one of the things that have been hidden before the foundation of the world he will bring it up yes. oh you are in a challenge and satan has overwhelmed you the witches of your village have vowed that the next time you are coming home you are coming home in a coffin it's a good place to be yes you know why that threat will make you look for god very well you are not looking for him now but when a threat like that comes he encourages you to look for god to look for job and meanwhile they, no matter the reason for which you are looking for him the bible said there's a reward for them that are diligent that's a reward i will begin to press we begin to press as you are pressing as you are going then the spirit of god begins to search so what's the solution to a gang up of witches he searches into the depths of god into the things that are hidden in god he will give you an answer that in the natural you will call it funny but therein lies the power of that mystery just like when the lord told me i was about to be a manager in the oil industry he told me to resign and i did when i did i came back home then i took a fast i said okay now how will i feed these people you told me to resign and you did not ask these people to leave if you come to my house you'll be disappointed there are inhabitants there there are inhabitants you'll be disappointed you didn't ask them to leave that means you have a plan and i began to search i began to search you know what he told me after four days of searching he said teach the bible say ah teach the bible so what i wanted to do was let me behave as if i'm obeying then after one year we come back if it doesn't work say you know you said I should teach the Bible as an answer to the poverty that you have exposed us to. <laughs> God spoke to me about resigning in September. I resigned in October. I still had one month salary, which is the October salary. So I started the prayers in November. November, he said, teach the Bible. So I said, I wanted to do that for one year and obey so that when it doesn't work, because it's not going to work, then I'll go to him and say, see what you said. Second of December was my birthday. So on my birthday, people began to send me money. And when they sent me money, 
on the 2nd of December when the last alert came into my phone. I calculated how much came to me that day. It was my one month salary that came in one day. So I now went and sat and said, eh. <laughs> You know why it's difficult for you to comprehend? It's a mystery. It doesn't make sense to your mind. Do you know that I never had the opportunity to go back to God to tell him, hey, this thing you said I should do, it didn't work out. He showed me that my salary in the, because you know those days in the oil industry that's the best job you can have in nigeria that's the best oh my god we felt like the most privileged people do you understand i thought that was the best god could do until he asked me to resign he gave me my salary in one day i said what that, that means that's not the best you can do something more than the oil industry see it's okay. you say i can teach the bible oh. <laughs> i continue that's how i stood before kings teaching the bible yes yes yes, yes. Ah, there we they say who is this man was he there when they wrote the Bible, call him. Hey, what did you? He said, teach the Bible. So recently now, somebody wanted to appreciate me. I went to teach the Bible. So we left. The person wanted to appreciate me. And when I saw the alert, it was my two years salary. Two years. Yes teach what the Bible the Holy Ghost has the solution to all our problems past present and future but you see the average believer doesn't want to explore the fellowship of the mystery meanwhile this arrangement was set up so that your spirit will have the capacity can ride now let me tell you theologically and experientially if you read every scripture in the new testament that there is spirit that is from romans spirit 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 hmm? if you interpret it to mean your human spirit it to be right if you interpret it to mean the holy spirit it to be right try it that's the economy of the mingled spirit i'm trying to tell you and experientially you cannot tell if it's your spirit that moved or it's the holy ghost that moved because it's mingled He said, teach the Bible. Our ministry almost scattered. Crisis broke out. I ran to him. I said, what is this? You didn't tell me of these kind of problems. How do we solve it? Prayed for three days. On the third day, he came to me on my knees. He said, stand still and you will see the salvation of god for the egyptians that you see today you will see them no more and forever so i kept quiet and i watched god fulfill his counsel i didn't need to do anything you are too wise that's why you are not going there the problem of poverty solved it because it took me into the knowledge of the mystery the problem of crisis in in the church it solved it it took me into the knowledge of the mystery every time i have a challenge i go back and then the holy spirit begins to search like tonight as we begin to pray in tongues he will start i'm used to it he will start searching he will start searching. He will start searching. Has it ever happened to you before? We are going to travel tonight. 
he has all the answer you say oh there's an economic situation ah, calm down the earth realm the earth the description of the earth is insufficient this description of the heavens is sufficient and god intended that the heavens will always support the earth if you decide to operate in the flesh and on the earth you will always have insufficiency but we need to journey into the dimensions of god where there is no sufficiency you see zachariah was speaking about his insufficiency i'm an old man and my wife is well stricken in years that's how the earth is insufficient menopause has entered there's no way out he said i am gabriel i stand in the presence of the lord and i bring you glad tidings that wife elizabeth shall conceive and she shall bear a son there shall be joy and gladness at his birth for he shall go before him in the spirit and power of elias the prophet see there's sufficiency there there's insufficiency until that realm opens up to swallow up the insufficiency this is how we will continue you will keep de describing the economy all the indices of the performance of the economy i am not of this world i have access to resources beyond time and beyond space my life will not be defined by the economy of nigeria though a troop rise up against me they do not know where my strength resides he said by the lord i shall break through a troop by the lord i will leap over a wall if you have not factored god into the equation you are not yet ready to fight me we are going for a search program now so that the holy spirit can can take us into the hidden things of god uh, the bible says that these things were put in place for our advantage he doesn't want you to be disadvantaged he said the spirit is the one that helped with our infirmities he knows that your weaknesses are legitimate but in the spirit of god there is help for your infirmities oh my god are you crying about the invasion of witchcraft that has plundered the family and all the male members of the fam family are given to alcohol and they are buried under alcohol there seem to be a waster that has been unleashed to eat up the fortunes of the clan the fortunes of the family every male is hid under the yoke of alcohol and you have wondered how will this darkness come to an end he said with men these things might be impossible but not with god for with god all things Kapone, he said all things are possible for he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increases strength for even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but there that way to have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to jesus or you want to rededicate your life to jesus christ as your lord and savior then say this short prayer lord i admit i am a sinner i need and want your forgiveness i accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love not based on anything i have done cleanse me and make me your child be faithy receive you into my heart as the son of god and as savior and lord of my life from now on help me live for you with you in control dot in your precious name amen congratulations to you if you have just said that prayer you are now a child of god look around you for a bible believing church and also ask jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve him Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.